the case of Zara Alina. Jordan chased Zara for about half a mile with a shadow of persistence and evil. Zara, unaware of the danger, continued on her way, without suspecting that evil was already approaching. Suddenly, he appeared out of the darkness like a ghost, grabbed her by the neck with one hand, and covered her mouth with the other so that the girl would not scream. He blocked her breathing, and then dragged her into the thicket of the forest, where darkness and inhumanity awaited the victim. There, in a forgotten corner of the world, hell descended on Zara. He forcibly invaded her body, her soul, leaving only a scream of pain and horror that was lost in the darkness of the night. Despite her desperate attempts to resist, her cries remained unanswered in the ruthless void. This whole nightmare, this terrible aggression lasted for nine whole minutes, which seemed like an eternity for Zara, who felt fear and hopelessness. Then, as if nothing had happened, Jordan walked back to his house, leaving behind only traces of destruction and an absolute nightmare. But what if all this was just the beginning of an even more eerie and mysterious story? What if the hidden truth about what happened that terrible night turned out to be more confusing and dark than it seemed at first glance? Secrets hidden in the shadows of the past can destroy not only lives, but also destroy all that remains of hope and peace in this world. Only by digging deeper one can find the answers, but there are even more questions hiding behind them. In the winter of 1986, Zara Alina was born in the vast landscapes of Great Britain. She was the first of five children of a single mother, a young woman who mysteriously moved her life from the Pakistani slums to this corner of the UK back in 1968. Zara embodied the hopes and dreams of her parents, and her birth was an important event. She was the first granddaughter of Radha Parvin, and it brought her a special status in her community. From early childhood, Zara was surrounded by relatives who raised her to a pedestal, showering her with tenderness and care. She grew up surrounded by numerous generations, studying at a unique school of life where the rules were written in blood and betrayal. Despite their lack of finances, Zara's parents invested everything in their daughter's education, believing that she would be able to find everything she needed for a successful life. Their dreams were strong, their hopes were stronger, but in this world of dark streets and hidden ambitions, Zara's life was in danger, hanging over her like a dark cloud. From early childhood, the fire of passion and hunger for life burned in Zara's heart. She dived into the world of tap dancing, where every movement, like a note in a symphony of passion, gave birth to beauty and harmony. Swimming was another passion of her soul, allowing her to escape from the gray everyday life and feel the wave of freedom. She always dressed exquisitely, as if creating a work of art from herself, embodying her dreams in every outfit. But that was just the beginning. When she skated for the first time, she felt new breath of freedom in her soul. Skating became not just a hobby for her, but a way of breathing, a way of expressing the deepest essence of her soul. Among those who knew Zara, no one was surprised to hear that she dreamed of becoming a lawyer. Her heart was full of desire to protect and help others because she was that bright ray of hope in a world full of evil. Her friendly nature sparkled with joy which was contagious, like a fire in the dark. Her gaze and sparkling eyes promised miracles, and her black curly hair seemed to have been created to tempt fate. Her image was full of charm, like a magic potion mixing passion, kindness, and courage in an extraordinary cocktail of attractiveness. Already in her teens, she had the opportunity to travel around England and visit museums and galleries. She showed big interest in art and culture. These trips became an indicator of how independent she was. Later, trips to the rest of Europe followed. This was a clear confirmation that she inherited the desire for adventure from her relatives. It seems she was following in the footsteps of her Aunt Farah, who, unlike the rest of the family, chose Portugal over the UK. It was fascinating for a young woman to see the work of her aunt, who worked as a psychotherapist in women's organizations. Zara visited her several times. After graduating from high school, her aspirations began to be realized when she got in the University of Westminster. Since then, she worked hard to achieve her goals while taking care of her mother and grandmother at the same time. 
Her tiny figure was full of a passionate soul and unstoppable energy. Her sense of justice and equality was not limited to the walls of the lecture hall. On the contrary, the generous and caring Zara supported refugees fleeing violence and sought to give a voice to those who had less power. She also participated in volunteer work in community canteens to help the homeless. In general, she had a special habit of noticing the needs of others and always including them in her schedule. Zara was an easygoing girl. Her aunt Smira Naz lived nearby, and she often visited her several times a week. While preparing for the exams, she asked her aunt to help her to study, but they always ended up laughing. Zara left a trail of joy behind her everywhere she went, as those who knew her at that time claimed. In addition, she was hardworking, covered all her expenses, and helped her family. She worked at a local clothing store and knew everyone in the area, from teenagers to the elderly. She always greeted everyone with kindness and was willing to help if necessary. The young girl could talk for hours, but it did not affect her ability to listen carefully to others. Her generosity extended to all living creatures, and she especially loved cats. Sometimes she spent her own money to take stray cats to the vet, take care of them at home, or persuade neighbors to take them in. Her friend Sanji Naira described her as radiant and believed that her main gift was the ability to share optimism. When Sanji was in a bad mood, he turned to her for help. In Zara's life, there was a bright star whose name was engraved in the very depths of her heart, Carissa Peters. They were not just friends, but companions in the struggle for justice, for protection of women from violence and abuse. Their shared hobbies, especially in the field of women's rights, and it was the connecting thread that carried their friendship through difficulties and trials. Zara and Carissa were so close that they seemed to share the same soul. They easily entered each other's house, as if they were their own shelters from the storms of the world, or talked on the phone almost every day, discussing the news, their thoughts and plans for the future. In 2002, after successfully passing the exams and completing her internship in law field, Zara had the opportunity to work in the, the Crown Prosecution Service. It was an important step and an integral part of her dream to become a full-fledged lawyer. To do this, she worked tirelessly, even when her studies were interrupted by worries about her mother and grandmother, as well as financial difficulties. This step was important not only for her, but also for Carissa and for those who believed in her, who support her on this stormy journey to a bright future. On her first day at her new job, Zara couldn't help but be happy. She sent a smiley selfie to her friends and family, as if announcing to the whole world her new era of life. It wasn't just a new job, it was the last piece in the mosaic of her dreams. She had been coming to this for so long that she could hardly believe in her own happiness. Working as an administrator might seem a secondary post, but for Zara, it was a giant step towards her goal. At the age of 35, she realized that a new stage in her life was beginning, and this made her heart beat with extraordinary force. It wasn't just a working day, it was the beginning of a new era, an era when she felt fulfilled and happy. The new job strengthened her confidence in the fact that it was time to create her own family. She dreamed of her children, how they would be happy and protected, how they would live in a world filled with love and harmony. At that moment, Zara realized that every new day was a step towards her happiness, a step towards her dream of having her own family. With such an active life between work, volunteering, friends, and the attentive care of her mother and grandmother, with whom she lived in a separate room when necessary, Zara loved to walk. She liked to move freely. She didn't bother with small things. She could easily put a pair of shoes in her bag to change them for sneakers when needed. Zara believed that a woman should be able to move freely without any obstacles, and even more so that no one should have deprived them of this right. But near her house, there was a man whose existence completely took away this woman's right. His name was Jordan McSweeney. He was a few years younger than Zara, and it was unknown where he was from. One Saturday evening, when the sun had already set below the horizon, Zara was going to meet a friend. Even though she was not in the mood, she decided not to cancel the meeting. Zara's word was as strong as steel, and she always stuck to her promises, not allowing her mood to dictate her actions. 
Her devotion was as steady as a rock, and she was ready to walk through thick and thin for the sake of her friends. Before leaving, Zara picked up the phone to talk to Aunt Farah. But this time there was a certain anxiety in her voice that did not go unnoticed. Her aunt asked her to be careful, and Zara realized that even if she wasn't going to go far from home, the world around her seemed strange and unpredictable that evening. But she stubbornly told herself that she knew every dark corner of the city, and her name was known to everyone who had ever looked at her. But something about this evening made her heart beat faster, and Zara decided to be more careful. At the appointed time, she met her friend at a local bar called the Ilford Big Spoon, located on the west end of London. Ilford is a lively and diverse London area, an ideal place for dinner and gatherings, so the girls visited this place that Saturday evening. Then they went to another bar, and there Zara drank a couple glasses of water. At the same time, Jordan was having one drink after another at another nearby nightclub. An idea was forming in his mind, and he refused to resist it. He intended to find a woman to attack that evening. Surveillance cameras recorded how Jordan met women at the entrance to the club, hugged them without their consent, and tried to kiss them. He was particularly persistent with one of the employees, despite her obvious reluctance. He was kicked out of the club a little after 23 o'clock, and his inappropriate behavior remained recorded on cameras. When he came out, his actions were recorded by cameras as he walked along Romford Street towards the park. Seeing the woman walking, Jordan followed her and approached her closely. Although she tried to avoid him by entering the store, he was waiting for her outside. When the woman cautiously left, Jordan followed her again. Then he walked down the other side of the street, leaving her in sight. However, when the woman entered her house, Jordan had no choice but to continue on his way. According to the surveillance camera's data, at about 2 a.m. on Cranbrook Street, Jordan noticed a woman approaching him. Suddenly, he quickened his pace, approaching her. But on the video, you can see that two passing witnesses noticed Jordan's strange actions. Despite the man's suspicious behavior, the woman returned home safely, leaving Jordan surprised and annoyed. He returned to Cranbrook Street without success. At this time, Zara and her friend deciding to return home left the bar when it was 2 a.m. a friend took a taxi, preferring convenience, while Zara, given the short distance and good weather, decided to walk. They parted, and Zara headed down the residential street of Cranbrook, which is a 10-minute walk from her house. That's when Jordan noticed her. According to the chief inspector Dave Williams, Jordan had a clear intention. He was going to attack a woman that night, regardless of the location. Cranbrook Street remained busy even in the early morning hours. There was a constant flow of traffic. At the age of 13, Jordan had already been sentenced in Kent Juvenile Court for various offenses committed between 2006 and 2009. In August 2010, when he was 17 years old, he was found guilty of assaulting a girl, leaving her with a swollen eye, and he was given a four-month detention and correction period. Eleven years later, he attacked another woman, and he was again banned from approaching a woman, this time for three years. During this time, he had no right to contact her directly or indirectly. By 2010, Jordan had 28 convictions for 69 crimes, including theft, assaults on police and the public, criminal cases, theft of motor vehicles, traffic violations, committing crimes with bail and shoplifting. On his page on a well-known social network, he bragged about having a huge collection of weapon and in general extolled a criminal lifestyle to the sky, posting different photos and quotes. He also posted fake pictures saying that the FBI was looking for him. On June 17, 2022, he was released on parole after being sentenced to prison for criminal damage, racially aggravated harassment, and illegal carrying of a bladed weapon. One of the conditions was meetings with a parole officer. Jordan settled into a van on St. Valentine Street in a 130 acres park in the south of Gun Hill, the largest green space in London's Red Bridge District. He again violated all agreements and true to his criminal background, missed not one, but two meetings with a parole officer. As a result, the authorities refused to give him the advantage. 
the parole service began the procedure for returning him to prison on June 22, 2022, but they did not immediately inform the police, but only two days later. Early on Saturday morning, June 25, police visited Jordan's mother's house to arrest him and found an unpleasant surprise. He was not there. Around 2.30 a.m. on June 26, 2022, the streets of Ilford witnessed a terrible crime. Zara was found on the sidewalk with signs of abuse on her body. Her belongings were scattered, as if the mess in her life was embodied in the streets. Her body was bruised, her clothes were torn, and her eyes showed struggle for survival. A woman passing by immediately realized that the situation was extremely serious. Without hesitation, she began to give Zara a closed chest massage and do CPR, trying to give her the last hope of survival. But the injuries inflicted on her body turned out to be too serious. Even with all the help of passersby and emergency medical help, it was too late. Zara fought for her life, but the severe wounds and brutality of the crime were too strong. At 9.58 a.m. on Sunday, she passed away, leaving only the painful traces of a struggle behind. At that time, at about 11 a.m. in the park, Jordan, recorded by security cameras, was getting rid of evidence, throwing out his clothes. With his indifferent and cold-blooded demeanor, it became clear that this was not a random act of violence. The police responded quickly and knocked on Zara's grandmother's door, asking her to identify her granddaughter from the bar's video footage. When she confirmed that it was her, the police finally explained to her what had happened. Zara's uncle, Kasim Alina, called the rest of the family, including Aunt Farah, to tell them what had happened. In Portugal, her aunt crying remembered the call on Saturday night. After she broke the news to her children, Farah immediately flew to London. The family was in shock, trembling with horror. It was difficult for all of them to eat, sleep, or talk. Although they hardly dared to mention Zara's death, they also could not think of anything else. Meanwhile, detectives immediately began investigating the area where Zara was found. One of the first steps was to collect video footage from surveillance cameras to track the attacker's movements. This, along with the bloody fingerprints left near the scene, allowed them to identify Jordan. They then tracked his location using a video surveillance system. After receiving images of the main suspect, Inspector Dave sent an officer to Gun Hill to check if anyone else recognized Jordan. The operation was successful, and almost immediately they found Jordan sleeping in his van. The authorities immediately arrested him. Confused and stunned, Jordan had no resistance during the arrest. Clothes and shoes stained with blood were found in his trailer, which Jordan was trying to get rid of. Despite many hours of interrogation, Jordan remained silent refusing to reveal his name or give details of his life. At the same time, new video footage continued to appear, allowing police to reconstruct the chronology of events. The crime led parole officer Justin Russell to highlight a number of errors in the treatment of Jordan. It was noted that Jordan had been a criminal since the age of 16, both in and out of prison, which made him a high-risk criminal. He had been a high-risk criminal since the age of 16, but it turned out that he had not been treated appropriately. They should have taken more urgent measures to return him to prison after he missed scheduled supervision appointments upon release from detention. But they didn't do it. On Wednesday, June 29th, through a press release read by the police, Zara's family expressed how shocking the last few days have been. Logically, for them, it was an irreparable loss. Nevertheless, they stressed that the warmth and kindness shown by people were valuable to them and served as evidence of the strength of their beloved Zara's spirit. The family had a lot to do, and they needed to find strength. Aunt Farah communicated with the media and met with the police. Despite the shock and grief, her family, especially her aunt, taking into account her own experience in this field, knew that it was necessary to control the situation and protect Zara from accusations from certain media. On July 1, 2022, a preliminary hearing was held in the Jordan case, and on September 30th of the same year, a date was set for a hearing to prepare testimony in the trial. However, on the day of the scheduled trial, Jordan did not show up due to a positive test for COVID-19, 
and the hearing had to be postponed. On Saturday, July 2nd, a memorial service was held in memory of Zara, organized by her family, which took place on the way to her home, symbolizing the last journey that never ended. At this service, many of those present were dressed in white, symbolizing a silent walk. The event was attended by a coalition of more than 120 organizations specializing in supporting women, expressing solidarity in the fight against violence. It was one of the many groups that worked with Zara Alina's family. As they stated in the media, they demanded justice and taking responsibility. Additionally, they asked to focus on what they considered a priority and key issue, to resist violence from men and to stop the acts of violators. At a preliminary hearing before the investigation at the East London Court in Walthamstow, crime scene investigator Nadia Persut said she believes there is reason that local police officers could and should have taken more action to find Jordan before his attack on Zara. Consequently, she expressed the opinion that juries should resolve this issue. In addition, this investigation should have included the actions of the staff of corrections facilities for probationers. According to Nadia, this process was supposed to last a month. On November 16, 2022, Jordan also did not appear at the hearing, despite being told that this was mandatory. Thus, the meeting was organized via video call. This time, he pleaded guilty. Prosecutor Oliver Glasgow then described him as extremely unfit candidate for bail. This opinion was also supported by Judge Chima Grove. As for the verdict, the judge postponed it until December 14th of the same year. Approaching this date, Jordan again refused to appear in court. But even this did not prevent Jordan from being sentenced to life in prison with a minimum sentence of 33 years in prison for the murder of Zara Alina. The accused and his representatives filed an appeal, and the sentence was reduced to 33 years in prison. The judge stated that the fact that Zara was unconscious, did not feel anything, and did not suffer, reduced his sentence. Just four months later, it became known that Jordan had an intimate relationship with a woman who worked at the Belmar Correctional Service in South London, but was not a direct employee of the prison services. The Metropolitan Police later announced that a 32-year-old woman, whose identity was not disclosed, had been arrested and was under investigation on suspicion of misconduct in a public office. As for Zara Alina's family, everyone remembers Zara with love and pride, they still miss her. For her part, Aunt Farah continues to speak out against violence against women and girls. In March 2023, she joined a march organized by various groups seeking to draw attention to the issue and raise awareness. The protesters marched through the commercial district of West London to Trafalgar Square. Among various slogans, they stated that the lack of action against male violence is equal to abuse by the state. The tragic loss of Zara Alina has only added dark shades to this bloody picture of violence that consumes the hearts and minds of those who seek to change the world.